So, something happened the other day. And I ended up with another PV Bandit. Now, this particular one is the current generation of PV Bandits, but I didn't buy this new. I got it used at a second-hand store here in Melbourne, Australia for 174 Australian dollars, which is an absolute steal for an amplifier here. So I was wrapped. It's about $14 more than I think I paid for my Red Stripe PV Bandit. And this is the most current generation. I've had so many questions about this amp and my thoughts about it. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna pick this up, do some videos, do some comparisons with the Red Stripe Bandit and see what everybody thinks and see what I think about it as well. I know a lot of people have bought these on my recommendation in the past. Are these as good? We'll find out. We'll test the clean channel with a tube screamer. We'll test the dirty channel and compare it to the clean channel with a tube screamer and all the other functions on the amp as well. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. For the clean parts, I'm gonna be using my 52 reissue Telecaster from Fender. It's loaded with a set of Danny Gatton pickups from Joe Barden. And we're gonna go through all of the three different voicings for the clean channel, starting with the classic channel, which I feel is the best for this particular amplifier. It kind of feels the most balanced on all of the frequencies. And we'll get to that in a moment. I'll give you my opinions as we go as well. So here we go, this is neck pickup. Now that's with the amplifier on 100% power attenuation on the back, so as loud as the amp goes, and it's dead clean at that particular volume, and that's very, very close to gig volume. I took this out and played it live the other night. I didn't get it past about three or four on the volume with my pedals. It was just really, really loud, so that's cool. Now, let's try the warm channel, and I put that in quotations. This has a high end frequency that you just can't get rid of. Let's take a listen. This channel seems about 15% louder or so, just rough estimate, than the classic actual channel. And the weird thing is, even with the high end all the way down, that high end sort of brittleness still comes through. It is blisteringly like toppy. So yeah, for my, to my ear, I don't really like that at all. I much prefer the classic channel. We'll go back to it and I'll put the treble back up to 12 o'clock and you'll notice a big difference. High end sounds great on that setting. Now, on the Red Stripe PV Bandit, I actually love the vintage clean channel. On this one, I don't know, let's take a listen. It's not bad, it's probably my second choice out of all of them. It feels like it lacks a little bit of low end, so we're gonna turn up the bass all the way. Doesn't sort of sound fat enough in my opinion, and it's very, very bright still. Let's go back to the classic, and this is with the bass and treble where it just was set before. To my ear, that's dead clean, and it's also a really great pedal platform. Let's try it with the Maxon Tube Screamer. I've got the volume at one o'clock, the drive at 10 o'clock, and the treble right in the center. Here we go. and back off. Mm -hmm. 
So I definitely use this on the classic channel next time I take it out live. I think I made the mistake maybe of trying the warm one because it felt like it added more bottom end, but it just added this top end frequency that I didn't like at all. So let's now try the amplifier. There's a switch on the back. We're gonna try it at less wattage. So we've got it on 100%. Let's try it at 25%. So this is dropping the output volume. It's dropped it quite a bit. Now the cool thing is, a little trick here, let's crank up the clean channel and we'll get, you know, some sort of tube-like distortion. This is kind of along the lines of using the T-Dynamics control on the amplifier on the red stripe. If you turn it all the way down and crank up the master volume or the clean channel volume, you're gonna get the amp to sort of break up like this. Now, one thing I've noticed with this amplifier, because it has a digital reverb, when I run it like this, or if I crank up the clean channel most of the way up, the reverb becomes way more prominent than what it does with the actual volume down. It's like someone's walked over to the amp and sort of cranked it up a few notches, but when I turn it back down, it sort of drops again. It's there, but it's not as prominent as it was with the amp cranked. So overall, the clean channel is pretty good for pedals, no doubt about it. Let's give the lead channel of this a go now, and I've got everything at 12 o'clock except for the post gain, which is at three. So that's the output volume of this particular channel. And that might not sound like a lot, but it's gig volume. It's a really, really loud amp and the switch on the back is back to 100%, so it's pretty loud. Let's give this a shot, neck pickup. Woo, it's pretty bright. Let's just turn down the highs. Pretty cool tone. Let's try it now with my volume control down. And back up on bridge. Let's grab a Les Paul. Same settings on this Tokai I Love Rock now. This is neck pickup. Sounds great. Let's go back to the clean channel for a moment and try it with the Tube Screamer. See if it's close. All right, hopefully that didn't clip. It looks pretty close. If it did, I apologize, but the pedal sounds way fatter still going into the amplifier on the clean channel. Then the drive channel, but the drive channel doesn't sound bad at all. It's actually surprisingly good. Now, we'll save the best to last, and I put best in quotations. Over to the high gain setting on the amplifier now. This is a really good channel. It's great for lead stuff, and it's kind of like the hidden gem maybe of this particular amplifier. As you can see, I've got the gain down to about nine o'clock. Everything else is as it was. Here we go. comes alive with humbuckers, no doubt about it. This is Bridge. Woo. 
Now over to the modern setting, as uh, Steve from Boston would say. <laughs> Let's give this a shot. Now that's that scooped modern sound that I don't like at all, but if that's what you're into, you'll probably get a kick out of that. But for my money, the classic and also the high gain settings are the way to go. And I'm sort of surprised how much gain the high gain has, even though it's titled high gain. It has way more gain than I thought, but it's still musical. It doesn't sound like it, you lose any frequencies. It just sounds full and fat. It's a great solo tone. <laughs> All right, back to the classic Dirty Channel now. I think I like this one the best. I'll put the gain back up to about 12 o'clock. I'm gonna take a look at the boost control. I've left it at 12 o'clock the entire time because I don't actually have the foot switch that can turn it on and off with me right now. So we'll give it a shot. This is Bridge. <laughs> All the way down. And now what I'll do, I'll show you it all the way up. So this is foot switchable. So if you had the foot switch, you could turn this on and off and get a huge boost. I gotta say, this Bandit seems way louder than the Red Stripe Bandit. I'm not gonna go ahead and say it's better, but it's definitely way louder at the same settings. And having that boost, <laughs> man, it gets loud. That's, that's almost twice, I can see it on the waveform over here. It's easily twice as loud as with it all the way down. Let's try one more time. Half. Even that sounds really loud, and then brutally loud. <laughs> Wrong note, who cares. On the back of the amplifier, there's also another three-way switch. I've got the switch now in the up position, which is the loose setting, and it kind of changes the bass response and cabinet response of the amp. I don't know if it's an emulated circuit or what, but you can hear a difference in the way that it feels. Let's try this. What a tone. Medium. smell that uh, burning sort of burning dust smell <laughs> and over to tight tell you what I'll go back to loose so you can hear the difference now Tight sounds more defined to my ear. The notes are a little bit more present. Cool. Thanks for watching guys. My name's Shane. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I'll try and cover a few things I think I'll be asked about this. So what are my thoughts on the amp overall? It's fine. If you don't already have a PV Bandit and you've been looking for a Red Stripe one, something like this would definitely do the trick. It's loud. I think this particular amplifier is actually louder than the Red Stripe Bandit. I'm going to do a comparison and also test the sound pressure levels as well, just to see if what I think I'm hearing is what I'm actually hearing. After taking this and playing it live in the same room I play in every Sunday night, I had this amp between 3 and 4 on the volume, whereas I'd usually have my Red Stripe one at about 
what is it, six or seven on the volume, somewhere around there at the same spot and all that kind of thing. So this amplifier definitely kicks out a whole lot of grunt. Having the actual switchable power attenuator on the back is pretty cool. It's kind of like the old T-Dynamics control on the Red Stripe Bandit, except, you know, you've got three settings and that's it. So, you know, that'll appeal to some people. It might not appeal to others. It's kind of the same thing. Like if you use the T-Dynamics control on the Red Stripe and turn it all the way down, turn the volume all the way up, it's kind of doing the same thing as this would be at 25%. I think, you know, I'm not exactly sure of the output differences, but we'll get to that on an on a follow-up video coming up. So in terms of the clean tones, the only one that I really liked was the middle position, which was the classic clean tone. The vintage clean seemed to lack a lot of low end. It was maybe a little bit too ice picky. The warm channel, I don't like that at all for the sound that I like. Initially it felt better because it did have more low end, but it's that top end that you just can't get rid of. I just spoke to Dr. Rick about this. He reckons it might be EQ as a hard V. Lots of lows, lots of highs, and I think he could be right. So the most balanced one, the one that sounds best to my ear in terms of usability with pedals and just on its own, the classic one seems to sort of capture everything. It doesn't have too much top end, which is good, especially on a solid state amp. You don't want that ice pick coming through and chopping everybody's head off. So at least you could leave the, the high end control, EQ control, at 12 o'clock and not kill everybody. So in my opinion, that's definitely the best setting on the clean channel. Now the lead channel is an interesting kind of thing. It didn't sound bad at all. Now in terms of the classic drive channel, I like that quite a bit. Did I like it as much as the high gain? I don't know, they're just different. I could see myself using either of those two. The only thing is though, if you're gonna be using the high gain, you can't kind of back the gain off to a much lesser amount. It kicks in in high gain mode pretty pretty early on even with the gain most of the way down and then the more you turn it up the like louder and prouder and fuller it gets which is pretty cool it doesn't seem to suck a lot of the bass out on that particular channel which is awesome as well now the modern or modern channel isn't <laughs> isn't for me at all i don't play that style of music but if you're into the shred stuff you might like a super scooped sound but to my ear the tube screamer on the clean channel Overall, maybe not 100% of the time, but overall I liked more than the dirty channels on this amp, so it's a good pedal platform amplifier. One of the key advantages of this amp over the Red Stripe one is if you do have the foot switch, you can turn the boost on and off as well. This boost is extremely loud. It almost felt like the amp was twice as loud from having it all the way down to all the way up. No kidding, I was watching the waveforms on my computer going, is that gonna clip? It is brutally loud, so Having that boost function is a pretty cool thing. The digital reverb is both a pro and a con. The great thing about the digital reverb is there's no tank in the back. It makes the overall cabinet maybe that little bit lighter as well. It does actually feel quite a bit lighter than the Red Stripe one. Uh, but I did notice as I was pushing the gain or pushing the volume of the amplifier, it was almost like the circuit became more prominent. Uh, it's a little bit odd. I don't know how, how to explain that coherently, but it was like, the, the louder you turn up the amp, it's almost like you have to go over and turn the reverb down. That's probably the easiest explanation. In terms of the stock blue marble speaker, it's definitely fine. It's plenty loud. If you're not loud enough at a gig with one of these amps, I'd be extremely surprised. 80 watts RMS, these speakers are brutally loud as well. I, I just can't emphasize that enough. It does feel like a much louder amp, but if I was to replace the speaker, I would definitely try Texas Heat. It would shave off a little bit of the top end which you could also compensate by by just turning up the treble control on the channel just a little bit, but you wouldn't get that sort of ice pick that you would be getting on the warm channel. So a Texas Heat would be a great speaker. Something like a Creamback would probably be a good choice or a WGS ET90, something like that. This sort of has an inherently, maybe sort of tailored top end, just sort of rounded out a little bit so you don't get those really harsh frequencies. They would probably be my choice. I think the Texas Heat though, just in terms of its attitude and what it does sonically would be a great fit for this amp as well. It's been in my Red Stripe Bandit for a, a, probably two years now or so, and I, would, I don't wanna replace that with anything else. I much prefer it over the stock speaker. Odds are it would make a huge improvement as well in an amplifier like this one as well. This last point is probably one of those things that won't matter to a whole lot of people, but visually, I really like this amp. It looks like a much more classic sort of amplifier 
than some of the 80s and 90s style ones that PV have made in the past. Now that's not to belittle the Red Stripe one. I have the Red Stripe PV Bandit and the Red Stripe Studio Pro 112 right behind me. So I love those amps. I think they sound great and looks really don't matter in the end anyway. I mean, look at me. But this amp definitely looks a whole lot better than I think any of their other ones. I just really like it. I think it's a classic design and it won't age probably as, as quickly as some of the other ones that you've seen. Uh, reliability wise, overall, these are pretty great amps. I got a couple of friends that have them as well. And uh, yeah, they, they take them to the jam every single week for a number of years. So I know that these ones are pretty reliable on the most part. I'm sure some people out there have had problems with them like any brand of anything out there ever. These solid state PV amps just generally go on and on for years. I mean, some of the amps I have are much, much older than my car and they're still going strong. Thanks again for watching guys. If you do have any questions and I missed anything, please let me know in the comments. Stay tuned, I will have a shootout coming up between both of these amplifiers and I may actually put the stock speaker back in the red stripe one for that, I'm not too sure. So let me know if you wanna hear it with the Texas Heat versus this as stock or if you wanna hear, you know, apples to apples, stock for everything in both. So let me know in the comments. Thanks again, my name's Shane. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell and if you like the video, give it the thumbs up and I'll catch you soon. See ya.